Right then, welcome back to Stretford Paddock. Stephen Howson, that's Old Trafford. Let's get stuck into it. Right then, it started getting a little, I was going to say hot, but it's got warm, hasn't it? It started to warm up nicely. Now, last week I said, listen, I don't think you're going to see signings happening in the next week. Too close to the Euros. People aren't going to be allowed to just leave England camp. Honestly, people aren't just going to be allowed to leave England camp with preparations for a major tournament on the cards to come and dick about with some personal stuff. And I still think that's going to be the case. I reckon the deal can be concluded very quickly following the tournament if you can manage to get all the stuff agreed with the player and with the club pending a medical. I think that would be very, very sensible from everyone's point of view. Now, Fabrizio Romano, friend of the show, came out and said Manchester United have an agreement with the player until June 2026, I believe it was. So five-year contract. Nice, I like that. Um, but no deal as yet with the club. So what does that mean? It sounds like United actually put a bid in um, this week, put a bid in, and it, it was a little bit low. But do you know what? Not worried. Like I said, you've almost got two or three weeks of allowed messing around at the moment where you can play a little bit of poker with each other as long as you actually get the thing done because last year Dortmund said to us, get it done by that day or sling it. And we went, you don't mean that. It'll be all right. And then we messed around. It went past that deadline and they went, well, we told you, so sling it. And I reckon if we've learned anything, we won't do that again this time around. Now, for me, Sancho is a massive priority for United. I still think United need a ton of other positions, but it does seem like Manchester United are at least having negotiations with Dortmund, which is a movement as it's gone forward. I give it six and a half last week. We're giving it a seven this week, come on. And speaking of number sevens, Cristiano Ronaldo. Oh, I don't I don't really want to entertain this. I don't really want to get into this kind of party. But as we know, he seemingly wants a new challenge, completed everything he wants to complete. Um, Demazio's coming out and saying, yeah, he's leaving Juventus. The two spots he's looking at is Paris and United. And you go, I can see both of those. I can see both of those. And I can't necessarily, we said this last week, didn't we? Can't necessarily see anywhere else now there was a little bit of additional information in this and the additional information was United can't pay his wage now we can pay his wage we don't want to pay his wage let's have it right we just don't want to pay Ronaldo's on 26 million a year roughly half a million a week Jesus United supposedly think he's going to ask somewhere in the region of 18 to 20 million so it's you know somewhere in the region of still 400 grand a week to be honest I can see him doing that. Here's the thing that you've got to consider, though. You've already got De Gea in and around that sort of ballpark. If Pogba signs an extension, or even if he doesn't sign an extension, he's going to be offered something in the region of four to 500 a week, at least. Otherwise, he's just going to spit in your face, I think. Uh, he's not going to be signing for anything less than what De Gea's on, absolutely, and he shouldn't either. Um, and this is the problem that you have when you do the sort of Sanchez deals that he did. You have to then give everyone pay rises accordingly, and before you know it, you've got a sort of absolute shit show that Barcelona is where you've got the likes of Griezmann on eight, 900 grand a week and you're a billion in debt. So you do really have to manage it and sometimes it's not about a case of, yeah, just pay the money because this things, these things start to really spiral out of control when you're not paying attention to them. Now, someone at the end of their career like Ronaldo, a one or two year deal, I think you can justify that, but can you imagine giving someone like a four, five, six year deal on this kind of cash, there's probably going to be a clause in there which says that they have to remain top earner at the club as well, which means that you're just committing to just obscene numbers of zeros. Cristiano Ronaldo to Manchester United to sort of dovetail in with Cavani as an experienced number nine. I'd love it, in all honesty. There'd be an absolute war for the number seven, though, innit? Sancho seven, Cavani seven. Can we do decimals? Would we be allowed to do decimals? Can we have 7.1, 7.2, 7.3? I don't know if we'd be able to do that. Try it. Ring me. See if we can sort it out. Um, but Ronaldo to United. I think he's leaving Juventus. If I had to say Ronaldo to leave Juventus, I'm giving you an 8 out of 10. If I had to say where he's going, though, I'm, I'm way less sure. But I don't think it's nothing in it. I think United would look to try and make this happen. Um, and as we've said a few times, if the Glazers really wanted to shut everyone up with a protest... The best way to do it would be to actually just have a great transfer window where, where everyone came out of it and went, oh my God, we, we might compete this year. A bit like what Chelsea did last year. Do that. 
do that. Just do it and see what happens. Hey, what's the worst that could happen? I'm not going to hate you any more than we already do, are we? So, Ronaldo to United, I can't give it more than like three out of ten. Ben White recently called up to England, and that's basically the basis of the article. Brighton apparently would have took 35 million for him like a week ago. Now they want 50 because the England call up sound. Um, I had a quick look at which reputable sources are reporting that United are interested in this fella, and it was the Metro, it was the MEN, and it was the Mail. So uh, let's file that straight in the bin, shall we? Zero out of ten. Right, as we get excited now, Sal Niguez. Joe you know Long, I've wanted to stand out here and talk about this lad. There's not been any like serious links with United in the past. It's just been that's a player I like, and I'd like to see him at United. And that's it, right? It's just a player I admire. There's, there's other players I admire. He's definitely, as you all well know, he's definitely a player I really admire. Now, Ekrem Kono, I don't know who this guy is. Um, it's a journalist on Twitter. He came out this morning, was quite strong with it. And it's on the back of a few little trickles over the last week or so, talking about there's some interest in him. United are, or United are thinking of looking at him and, and also Atletico are thinking of letting him go. Now, he's got, a, I believe, a £63 million release clause. Atletico want to talk around something like that, but if you're letting him go, you're not going to get your full asking price for him. Or if you're the ones behind the sale, you might end up with you know, 10, 20% less than that. So you might end up getting him for in the 40 to 55 sort of range, which I think would be absolutely sensational business. Look at the, uh, the teams that he's linked with. There was some talk that he was um, going to Paris, some talk that he was going to Bayern Munich. Uh, what this Ekrem Kono guy's come out and said now is that um, United are preparing a bid for him, which is the most United thing ever in it is to prepare a bid once he's already agreed terms elsewhere, if that's the case that there is. Now, again, I'd love him. I'd absolutely love him at United. At the moment, though, just to contain my own heart, I'm just going to give it two out of ten. There seems like there's something here, not nothing, so I'm not giving it a zero, but we're certainly not on the way down the road. I have no idea if, if he's interested in us. That's the other thing. You have to make the club happy to take whatever you're going to offer him, but the player's also got to be interested in joining you as well. And if those two things don't marry up, you don't make the transfer. So unlike with Sancho, where we've known for years Sancho wants to come to United, I have no idea if, if Sal dreams of coming to Buzz Rocks with me on Stratford Road on a Tuesday afternoon. Two out of ten. That was the ins, this is the outs. One matter is the first on the list and he's got until the 30th of June to sign an extension to his contract to extend the seven years that he's already had at Manchester United. This is from BBC Sport. And um, yeah, I think this is literally, I'm going to give it a five out of 10 before we even get into it, but <laughs> I think he could go and I think he could go and be a starter in plenty of the leagues around the world, probably all bar one, which is England. And I think he could make a very good living doing it. But I also believe that he's, he's put down some roots in Manchester. So I wouldn't be shocked if he stayed and I wouldn't be shocked if he goes. Hence why it's five out of ten. And do you know what? Next up, David De Gea. And I thought we'd left this last season, to be honest. I thought we would see some resolution. But I guess we haven't seen the resolution. De Gea hasn't had any indication, supposedly, that his reign as number one is coming to an end. Uh, and seemingly, Dean Henderson's quite bullish about his opportunities at becoming United's number one. I'm not sure it's the best thing to have two players quite close to each other in terms of ability vying for the same spot. I don't know if that's productive or not. I think it would probably be better if you knew who your number one was and you can start planning and, and moving on with everything else from that. Seemingly, there's been no desire or interest from United to try and find a buyer for him again going back to that monumental contract that he's on is that something to do with it if it is why do we give Dean Henderson a fat new contract last year because now you've just made him harder to shift on you might have got a good transfer fee out of Dean Henderson if you'd have kept him on a lower wage and not extended his contract real conundrum that I thought we was going to fix over the last 12 months that we've clearly not fixed over the last 12 months and it's going to rumble on for at least six months I don't think you're getting any resolution out of this for at least the next six months, if not the next year. So there you go. Is De Gea leaving? Can't give it more than a two out of ten at the moment because I have no idea where he would go. Anyway, cheers for tuning in. Make sure to subscribe. Get your comments in below and I'll see you in the next one. Later.